If you're in chemistry, you are going to have to balance a chemical equation. There's no if, ands, ors, or nots about it. And most students think it's impossible, like balancing an elephant on a beach ball, or doing yoga, or having enough money at the end of your month. But it really isn't that bad. So, find a happy place and get ready to balance chemical equations. But why do we balance chemical equations? Well, let's say I have some mercury oxide, and I heat it up. I would end up with mercury and oxygen gas. And right off the back, by looking at the equation, you could say, well, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Where did this other oxygen come from? And the simple answer is because oxygen is diatomic, it's never by itself, it's like bromine, don't leave bromine without a bro. It always appears as either oxygen, O2, or it's in some sort of compound. And you might go, okay, well that's why you wrote it this way, so what's the big deal? Well, if I started with 10 grams of mercury oxide, after I heat it up, I'd have 9.3 grams of, ox of, of mercury, the metal. So what happened to that 0.7 grams left over? Well, you've probably figured out that, oh, well, that must be the oxygen that's produced. And I would ask you if you were in class, well, why, why is it 0.7? And you would go, oh, well, because it has to be 10. Why does it have to be 10? Because these things have to become something, right? And you'd be right because what you have on one side of the equation has to equal what you have on the other after a chemical reaction has occurred. In other words, these two together have to give the original mass. And if you can follow that basic concept that what you have on one side of a reaction has to equal what you have on the other, you know one of the key components of chemistry, the law of conservation of mass that simply states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. All of the matter in the universe already exists, and it cannot be made, and you can't get rid of it. You can only rearrange how it appears. And it's because of this concept that we balance chemical reactions. Now, balancing chemical equations is a skill that develops with time and practice, just like your ability to write. You start off, you can barely hold your pen. By the end you finish college, you can still barely hold your pen, but you can probably type pretty well. It's really like Sudoku, where there really is only one possible logical, ex logical answer. And just like Sudoku, no one gets right their first time. So give it some time. I cannot teach you, per se, how to balance an equation. I can show you a couple tips, a few tricks, but you will require lots of practice. So with that being said, the basics of how to balance a chemical reaction. Again, find that happy place, because it's time to start. So let's start with mercury oxide again. When you're going to balance an equation, start by breaking it into its reactants half and its products half. There you go. That's more or less a straight line, kind of, I guess. And then take an atom inventory. To take an atom inventory, simply say how many of each ad, uh, element you have. So on the reactant side, I have one mercury and I have one oxygen. On the product side, I have one mercury and I have two oxygens. Remember that subscripts apply only to what is directly in front of them. To balance our reaction, we are going to change the number of each element present so that both sides have the same number once we're done. To do this, we are going to change the coefficients. These are the big numbers that go at the beginning of a molecule. They don't go in the middle. They don't go at the end. They go only at the beginning. And they're the only thing we can change when balancing a chemical reaction. Coefficients apply to what is behind them, everything that is behind them, until you get to a plus sign or the end of the equation. So if I put a 3 in front of mercury here, 
that would be 3 times 1, I would have now 3 mercuries. If I put a 3 in front of oxygen, that would give me 3 times 2, I would then have 6 oxygens. But if I put that 3 in front of mercury oxide, it applies to everything behind it. So I would go from having one mercury and one oxygen to three mercuries and three oxygens, because three times one is three, three times one is three. So if I want to balance this equation, my oxygens are out of balance. So I need two oxygens on this side, because one and two have two in common. Their lowest the common factor, or their lowest common uh, yeah, factor, is what we are going for because we want the lowest number of coefficients. So what do I multiply 1 by to get 2? Well that's easy enough. I would multiply it by 2. So I can put a 2 out front of mercury oxide. That would change now that I would not, I no longer have one oxygen and one mercury. I have now two oxygens and two mercuries. But now my mercury is out of whack, because while oxygen is balanced, mercury is not. So I'll need to put a 2 in front of mercury on the product side. When I do that, I go from having 1 mercury to having 2. And my reaction is now balanced. Taking an atom inventory is a little time consuming, and you may at first have to start by writing it down underneath each equation. But I highly recommend it. Taking atom inventory though might be a little difficult for some students. So I have another way of doing this exact same problem. So if you understood taking atom inventories, then you might want to skip ahead until you no longer see any shapes on the screen. If atom inventories seemed a little much for you, then try this method instead. First, again, start by breaking the, ad the reaction into a reactants half and a products half. Then assign each capital letter its own shape. So for this reaction, let's say all, H all H's are all HG's, because we're really we're breaking the atoms. We're breaking the molecules into their atoms. All HG's are going to be squares. If an atom is with something else, meaning the formula is together, we're just going to put these together so that they touch. So I have a mercury, or I have a square, and a triangle. And look, I'll even make a shape. Nice. On this side, I have one mercury, and then I have two triangles that are touching. Because they are the same element, I have two of them. Now the goal is to have the same sh number of shapes on both sides. So I have two triangles on this side. I'm going to need another triangle on this side. But I can't just draw another triangle. Because on this side, triangles are paired with HGs. Or triangles are paired with squares. So I need to redraw the triangle square shape. So now I have two triangles on this side and two triangles over here. But now my squares are out of proportion with one another. So I need to draw another square on this side. I can look and yep, I can just draw squares by themselves. So that makes that very easy. Now all I have to do is count how many times each shape appears in its particular column. So here I have this shape twice, so I'll put a 2 in front. Here I have this shape twice, so I put a 2 in front of there as well. And here I have this shape once, so I can put a 1 or just leave it blank. In the next video, I'll go over some tips to make this process a little easier, but you should practice on some general formulas for balancing. So if your teacher gave you a packet or gave you any worksheets, try to balance a couple equations that follow this similar pattern. You have one large reagent breaking down into two smaller ones, into two small products. This is called a decomposition reaction, and they're usually relatively easy to balance. You can also do the reverse synthesis reactions where two reagents make one product. That will be another simplistic or simplistic balancing equation.